Gotcha. Look at that. Hey. Oh. Number one, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and it's a medium. Fathers are intimidating. They're intimidating because they are fathers. Once a man has children, for the rest of his life, his attitude is, the hell with the world, I can make my own people. <laughs> I'll eat whatever I want, I'll wear whatever I want, and I'll create whoever I want. Jerry, this is Del Boca Vista's new physical fitness room. They got medicine balls, you can bike ride, anything you want. Stairmaster? What? Nothing. <laughs> See what I'm wearing? Oh, did you get that out of my bag? No, your mother found it. Son, this is the most wonderful and thoughtful thing you've ever done for me. You know, I bought you a Cadillac. <laughs> Twice. Oh, here he is. This is the man I wanted you to see. Izzy Mandelbaum. He's 80 years old, but strong as an ox. Watch this. See that? You couldn't do that. I could, I choose not to. Hey, Morty. Who's this? This is my son, Jerry, from New York. He thinks he can lift more than Izzy. I, I didn't say that. Hey, Izzy, this kid says he can lift more than you can. Well, you look pretty funny, Morty. You should be a comedian. Actually, I am a comedian. That's not so funny. <laughs> I think you're better than me, huh? Hey, Izzy used to work out with Charles Atlas in the 50s. 1850s? <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's go time. Let's see you lift that. Mr. Man Come on, really... come on. Pump it. All right. Uh, wrong attitude. You're not bringing that trash into my house. There. All right. Step aside, string bean. I'll show you. I'm going to take it up a notch. Back. Back. Somebody, call an ambulance. There's already an ambulance here for Mrs. Glickman. There's room for one more. How could you do that to Mr. Mandelbaum? You should be ashamed of yourself. He egged me on. You should be more mature. He's 80. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow, Jerry and I will visit Izzy and apologize. Now, good night. You're not sleeping in that shirt. It's too tight. This shirt will never leave my body. This is quite a condo. The Mandelbaums own the Magic Pan restaurants. The crepe place? Yeah, this is all big crepe money. This crepe money? <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, Mr. Mandelbaum, I just wanted to come by and tell you how sorry I was that you hurt yourself. What the hell is that? What? <laughs> that shirt. You think that you are the number one dad? This was a gift from my son. Oh, I see how it works now. He knocks me out of commission. So you can strut around in your fancy number one shirt. And I'll show you who's number one. Mr. Mandelbaum, please. It's go time. <laughs> oh, my back. I can't move. Call an ambulance. I think I saw one a couple doors down. Again, Mr. Mandelbaum, this back specialist is supposed to be the best. So if there's anything else I can do, please don't hesitate to uh, try and find my oh, number. Oh, wait. <laughs> How about that, huh? The world's greatest dad. <laughs> My son made it for me. That's very nice. The best in the world, which means I'm better than just number one. <laughs> well, I don't know how official any of these rankings really are. <laughs> Hi, son. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> this is your son? I got married in high school. Hey, who are you? This is Seinfeld's kid. Or you think you're tough picking on an old man? Maybe you'd like to try taking on somebody your own age. You got any mm. kids? <laughs> or you think you're better than me? Go ahead, pick out anything in the room here. I'll lift it up over my head. Look, no one is lifting anything. The television. <laughs> this one's for you, Pop. It's go time. <laughs> Oh, my back! Call ambulance! We're already in a hospital. I swear to you, I didn't know the TV was bolted to the table. I bet you pulled that trick on my daddy in Florida. He couldn't handle the weight. Oh, so now you think you're better than me. 
You think you're better than him? Look, let me just state for the record, I think you're both better than me. Okay. <laughs> my boys. My dad. My grandpa. Oh, come on. <laughs> what happened to him? He was trying to lift the TV. That TV? Oh, no. <laughs> it's go time. What do you need all that ketchup for? This is my ketchup. I bought this ketchup just so I could have as much as I want. So I, I talked to Phil Kasikoff today. Phil Kasikoff? Yeah, you know, my friend, the bra salesman. He says they're looking to maybe put somebody on, so I got you an interview next Friday with his boss. Next Friday? What time? Two o'clock. That's my whole afternoon! I was gonna look for sneakers! You can look for sneakers the next day! He doesn't know anything about bras. I know a little. Besides, what do you have to know? Well, it wouldn't hurt to go in and be able to discuss it intelligently. Maybe you should take a look at a few bras. Where's your bra? Give him a bra to look at. I'm not giving him a bra. Why not? Because I don't need him looking at my bra. Fine, so he'll go into the interview, he wouldn't know what he's talking about. We have to. You don't even know what they're made from. They're made from lycra spandex. Get out of here, lycra spandex? I think they are made from lycra spandex. You want a bet? How much you want a bet? I'm not betting. Take a look. All right, I'll get a bra. I don't know what the big problem is, getting a bra. She doesn't want to get a bra. I'm not saying go to the library and read the whole history, but it wouldn't kill you to know a little bit about it. All right, it wouldn't kill me. How long does it take to find a bra? What's going on in there? You ask me to get a pair of underwear, I'm back in two seconds. You know about the uh, cup sizes and all? They have different cups. Yeah, I, I know about the cup. You got the A, the B, the C, the D. That's the biggest. I know the D is the biggest. I base my whole life on knowing that the D is the biggest. Here, here's the bra. Let me see it. 100% lycra spandex. Let me see I it. I told you. Here. I think you know everything. <laughs> That's surprising. All right, what else? You got the cups in the front, two loops in the back. All right? I guess that's about it. I got it. Cups in the front, loops in the back. You got ketchup on it. <sighs> so how's everything going over here? Great. Couldn't be better. <laughs> Good, because Dad can make some people a little uncomfortable. Oh, no. Get out of here. <laughs> Man, Kramer, I could kill him. I can't believe it. You know better than to get involved with Kramer. He said he'd give me a lift. Ah, the lift. Like the lure of the siren song, never what it seems to be, yet who among us can resist? <laughs> Where do you come up with this stuff? Well, look who's here. Oh, hi, Dad. Hello, dear. Who's the lipstick for? No one. How's your mother? Fine. How about you? Are you working? Yeah, I'm reading manuscripts for Pendant Publishing. I told you ten times. Pendant? Those bastards. <laughs> well, all right, boys. We'll go to that Pakistani restaurant on 46th Street. You're not afraid of a little spice, are you? <laughs> Master of the house, going at the charm, ready with the handshake and an open hand. Pipes down, chorus boy. <laughs> oh, it's snowing. It's beautiful. Snow? Snow, that can't be good for suede, can it? I wouldn't think so. What should I do? Now, we're taking a cab, aren't we? Cab? It's only five blocks. Why don't you turn it inside out? Inside out, great. <laughs> Wait a 
minute. What the hell do you call this? I turned my jacket inside out. Well, you look like a damn fool. Well, it's a, it's a new suede jacket. Might get ruined. Well, you're not walking down the street with me and my daughter dressed like that. That's for damn sure. It's, uh, it's only a few blocks. Are you waiting long at the gate? Um, I don't even know. Where's that watch we bought you? Oh, uh, that's it for this piece of junk. I've had it. Is that the one your parents gave you? Yeah, but it never works. It's uh, being fixed. Hey, you got a guarantee on that watch. Give it to me, I'll take it back to where we got it. Is that the jeweler? Will you send me the bill? I'm not sending you the bill. That watch was a gift. You shouldn't have to pay for it. That's uh, $18.50. Here, I got it. What are you talking about? It's my car. Let me pay for the gas. No, no, put it away. Dad. Stop it. I have money. I make money. Yeah, yeah, you make money. You don't think I make money. That's what you think, isn't it? No, I don't think that. Yes, you do. That's what you both think. I'm paying. Dad, I'm paying. Jerry. Get out You're of here. You're not paying. Now, Jerry, no. please, do not do this to your car. Oh, my God, I'm going to get right now. Hi, Morty Seinfeld. I have a two o'clock appointment. Yes, Mr. Seinfeld. Would you please fill this out? All this? This whole thing? It's gonna take me 45 minutes. I know, it's very long. Look at this. It's a book. Employer's address. Why did they need this? You know, I never had a back problem until that night I slept on the convertible sofa. <laughs> My back was fine. Oh, it's not the sofa. You stick up for that sofa like I'm criticizing a person. You got it from Sullivan's. It's a good store. Well, one day somebody's gonna sleep on that thing and we'll get sued. I hope this doctor knows what he's doing. Leo says he's the best there is. Leo. I'm listening to Leo now. Well, you're lucky he was able to get you this appointment. You know what the waiting list is for this guy? Well, if he fixes my back, I'll be happy. <laughs> Have you ever had a sexually transmitted disease? <laughs> That's it. Hey, you got my name? You got my address. That's enough. Julie, you want to take him back? All right. All right, let's go already! <laughs> they keep you in here a year. They don't give a damn. I could die in here. Excuse me! Excuse me! What's going on? I'm here 20 minutes. Can somebody please help me? Shh! Quiet! Everyone can hear you. 20 minutes. I've been waiting 20 minutes. Well, the doctor must be busy. Well, then what do they make appointments for if they can't keep them? <laughs> Look, if I did that in my business, I wouldn't have made a nickel. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Seinfeld. I thought you forgot about me. We didn't forget. Ah! Oh, the Velcro. I can't stand Velcro. That tearing sound. I used to be in raincoats. I refuse to put that in any of my lines. OK, Mr. Seinfeld, please come this way. We need some x-rays. Leave all my stuff here? Just leave it. <laughs> So, when do I get to see the doctor? He'll be in with the x-rays in a few minutes. You can get dressed. <laughs> he stole my wallet. The bum stole my wallet. My wallet's gone! My wallet's gone! I have my wallet in my back pocket. It's gone. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I wanted to get my x-ray. Somebody takes my wallet. Is that the operation here? Mr. Seinfeld, I'm Dr. Denbrough. I've been going over your x-rays. I'm not interested in the x-rays. I want my money back. Somebody stole my wallet. I have $225 in there. Well, I don't see how something like that could have happened. Oh, you don't see. You don't see. <laughs> well, it happened. Believe me. What's going on? They stole my wallet. What? Yeah. Well, I was in getting x-rayed. All right, Mr. Seinfeld, I am sorry about your wallet, but would you like me to look over these x-rays? What kind of clip joint are you running here? Oh. <laughs> All right. Fine. The least you could have done was heard your diagnosis. I'm not interested in his diagnosis. He's a bum. You came all the way from Florida to see him. 
I want to know what kind of an office this is where you can't leave your pants in a room. You tell me. We have some big news for you. Big news? We're moving to Florida. What? <laughs> You're moving to Florida? <laughs> That's wonderful! I'm so happy! <laughs> for you! I'm so happy for you! Oh, what do you need this cold weather for? It has nothing to do with weather. It's because of the Seinfelds. Yeah, what, what do you mean? They don't want us there, so we're going. <laughs> We're moving right into Del Boca Vista! <laughs> so you're moving there for spite? Absolutely. No one tells Frank Costanza what to do! That's right! Oh, the hell of it out there, <laughs> So, Georgie, are you gonna come to visit us? Oh, every chance I get. Uh -oh. <laughs> What do you have to open this box for? There's already a box of cookies open. I wanted a chip ahoy. Uh, I don't like all these open boxes. Look, I got a few good years left. If I want a chip ahoy, I'm having it. <laughs> Surprise! Scary! Oh, Yay! my God! Hey. What the hell are you doing here? I'm a good son. Yeah. Just like that, no call? Just like that. Oh, you are really something. To what do we owe this great honor? You want to know? Come on outside. Outside? What's going on? Whenever Jerry comes, something exciting happens. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> well, what do you think? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> you bought a Cadillac? I bought it for you. It's yours. You what? You bought me a Cadillac? I bought you a Cadillac. There you go. Oh, are you out of your mind? <laughs> we can't take this. You don't want it? Are you kidding? He's not buying us a Cadillac. What are you, nuts? This is a very nice gesture, Jerry, but take it back. Can you believe this? I'm not letting him buy us a Cadillac. He hasn't got that kind of money. How do you know? Oh, get out of here, Mr. Big Shot. Why can't I buy my father a car? Your father doesn't need a car. Yes, I do. Oh, Lordy. We're keeping it. Over my dead body. What? Give me the... Give me the... Well, this worked out just as I had hoped. Hey, Jerry, look at this. My seat's got a memory. In case somebody moves it, I could be in prison for five years. I come out, my seat goes right back to where I like it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. Hi, Jack. So, how do you like this? Whose car? It's mine. Yours? That's right. My son bought it for me. He what? My son bought me the car. It's a present. You bought it? That's right. I bought it. You ever see one so nice? Some car. You want to take a ride? No, thank you. Come on, take a ride. You want to take a ride? Why not? I don't feel like taking a ride. Do I have to take a ride? He doesn't want to take uh -huh. a ride. What do you think? I've never ridden in a Cadillac before. Believe me, I have ridden in a Cadillac hundreds of times. Thousands. Thousands? <laughs> what do you think? You're such a big shot now because you got a Cadillac. Ah. Yeah. Did you believe that guy? Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right, are you ready to eat? All right, let's go. Jerry, let's go. It's time to eat. We're going to dinner. Dinner? Well, what time is it? It's 4.30. 4.30? Who eats dinner at 4.30? By the time we sit down, it'll be quarter to five. <laughs> I, I don't understand why we have to eat now. We gotta catch the early bird. It's only between 4.30 and 6. Yeah, they give you a tenderloin, a salad, and a baked potato for 4 95 You know what that costs you after 6? <laughs> if we eat at a decent hour, I'll treat, okay? You're not buying us dinner. I'm not force feeding myself a steak at 4.30 to save a couple bucks, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. We'll wait. But it's unheard of. <laughs> should take a civil service test. I'm not taking a civil service test. Look at this, George. You ever seen a silver dollar? Yes, I've seen a silver dollar. Why don't you want to take a civil service test? To do what? Work in the post office? Is that what you want me to do? Would you believe when I was 18, I had a silver dollar collection? <laughs> You get job security, you get a paycheck every week. I'm a college graduate. You want me to be a mailman? You know, I couldn't bring myself to spend one of these. I got some kind of a phobia. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? 
I don't know. I do know that I have some kind of a talent, something to offer. I just don't know what it is yet. I bet that collection would be worth a lot of money today. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't like this waiter. Look at him. He sees us. Doesn't want to come over. I need some air. George, where you going? I've got a lot of thinking to do. Jack is I'm seeing tomorrow. He's in charge of the whole thing. Yeah, so, Jerry, your mother tells me you're going to do one of your little comedy skits tomorrow. I don't think so. No. Listen, Marty, you want to settle up for last night? All right. I owe you 1945. What did you have? Uh, you had the minute steak. Yeah. Did you have a Coke or what? I did not have a Coke. Somebody had a Coke. I had a Coke. Oh, and I had the scampi. Mm, so that's uh, 1710 and the tax and the tip. All right, make it 20 bucks. It's 1945. <laughs> 1945. <laughs> See, you know your father. You gotta get it right to the penny. But that's why he was such a good president. <laughs> What kind of pen is that? This pen? Yeah. Oh, this is an astronaut pen. It writes upside down. They use this in space. Oh, wow, that's the astronaut pen. Yeah. I heard about that. Where yeah. did you get it? Oh, it was a gift. Oh, a lot of times I write in bed, and I have to turn and lean on my elbow to make the pen work. <laughs> take the pen. Oh, no. Go ahead. I couldn't. Come on, take the pen. I can't take Do it. Do me a personal favor. No, favorite. I'm not take comfortable. The pen. I cannot take it. Take the pen. Are you sure? I'm <laughs> positive. Take the pen. OK, <laughs> thank right. you very much. Not thank you. Me. Gee, boy. Jack, what are you doing? Stop it. Jack, we should go. <laughs> it was nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Thanks again, Come Jack. This is all over. What'd you take his pen for? <laughs> what? He gave it to me. But you didn't have to take it. Oh, my God. She's got to make a big deal out of everything. He offered it to me. Because you made such a big fuss about it. Well, I liked it. Should I have said I didn't like it? You shouldn't have said anything. What do you expect him to do? He could have said, thank you. I like it, too, and put it back in his pocket. He loves that pen. Oh, come on. He talks about it all the time. Every time he takes it out, he goes on and on about how it writes upside down, how the astronauts use it. If he likes it so much, he never should have offered it. He didn't think he'd accept. Well, he was wrong. <laughs> I know his wife. She has some mouth on her. She'll tell everyone in the condo now that you made him give you the pen. They're talking about it right now. So you want me to return it? Yes. He's not going to return that pen. That's ridiculous. Hey, I don't even want the pen now. Jack can afford to give away a pen with all his money. Believe me. Gives me a check for 1945. He didn't have a Coke. <laughs> Georgie, can you zip me up? Yeah. Yeah, one second. Well, come on. All right, all right, let's not get into panic mode. Let's not make a big deal out of this thing, and we're never going to get through this night. Well, I'm meeting your in-laws. I think I should look nice. My in-laws? Oh, my God. So, what do you think? Your old man can look pretty good when he wants to, huh? I don't like that tie. What's the matter with this tie? I've hardly worn it. It's too thin. They're wearing wide now. How do you know what kind of ties they wear? Go to any office building on 7th Avenue and tell me if there's anyone there wearing a thin tie like that. Go ahead. Oh, get the hell out of here. 7th Avenue. <laughs> do you think he should wear a tie like that? Huh? I think he should wear whatever tie he wants. We got to stop off and pick up a marble rye from Schnitzer's. It's out of our way. Why can't we pick up something at Lord's? It's right over here. No, we have to go to Schnitzer's. I'll show these people something about taste. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Rise and shine, sleepyhead. <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning. We let you sleep in. Well, as long as I'm up... Dad, I got you a birthday present. Here, happy birthday. Oh, Jerry. I should be buying you presents. What does that mean? 
Leave your father alone. It's his birthday. Ooh. <laughs> it's a radar detector. Radar detector. I've never seen you go over 20 miles an hour. You're like the Grand Marshal of the Rose Bowl Parade. It's a wizard organizer. This looks like too much money. Nah, I got it from a guy on the street. It was like 50 bucks. You think it's hot? Could be. I don't boy! Helen, Jerry got me a hot wizard computer. I'm right here. And you can do everything with it. You can get email, fax, as a calculator. So I can use it in the restaurant to figure out the tip? Yeah, I guess. But the really cool thing is the Daily Planner. Uh, Helen, we can go to the restaurants and figure out the tips. Jerry, you're getting your father too excited. Hello, hello! Oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, the house looks very nice. Yeah. Where's the mail? Hello, Jerry. Hello. So, how is the trip? Uh, your father. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with getting a receipt at a toll booth? I'm going upstairs. This stack should be bigger. Where's the TV guy? <laughs> what TV guy? I'm missing TV Guide, volume 41, number 31. <laughs> uh, Elaine took it to read on the subway. Elaine took it? I didn't know she took it. Well, it's two weeks old. How could you let her take the TV guy? <laughs> he collects them. <laughs> you collect TV Guide? The nerve of that woman. Walking into my house, stealing my collectible. Oh, my God! This was in our bed. What is this? A prophylactic wrapper? <laughs> what is this doing on my bed? I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> you were having sex on our bed? Yes. Who told you you could have sex in our bed? Well, my bed is too small. Your bed is too small? I'm gone two weeks and you turn our house into... into Bourbon Street? Where am I going to sleep? What are you talking about? I can't there. Of course you can. I can't. I can't! That's it. You're grounded. <laughs> you can't ground me. I'm a grown man. You want to live here? You respect the rules of our house. You're grounded! <laughs> Master of the house, turning on the clock, ready with a handshake and an open palm. <laughs>